Whoa! <laughs> oh, playing Pokemon sure is exhilarating, isn't it? Oh, wait. No, it isn't. Well, I hear there's a new Pokemon game coming out on Nintendo Switch, so uh, uh, let's give that one a look, shall we? Oh, the taking away contests, the Battle Frontier, following Pokemon, triple battles, rotation battles, challenge mode, mega evolutions, and Pokemon. Huh. Excuse me! What about the best feature? The Z-Move! The Z-Move can suck my demonetized diddle skin. It's the most pointless thing in Pokemon so far. That's because you haven't seen one in real life. Pikachu and I, Bear Grylls, will show you the true power of a Z-Move. <sighs> wow, this is actually pretty gay. Forget the Z-Moves. What have they added this time? Oh! Well, at least the new designs are pretty cool! Oh no, what is it this time? Oh! Well, I mean, as I said before, this is actually pretty cool! Turn it over. I mean, it can't be all that- Oh, fucking what the fuck?! Living in the city! It's like a roller coaster! At the start of every Pokemon game, you receive something called a starter Pokemon. I like it. That's right, you get to pick between a grass, water, or fire type Pokemon to start your journey. Each generation has a new set of three to choose from, and in this video, we'll go through them all and rank them. Well, I mean, based on my opinion anyway. Each evolution will be on a different tier list because goddammit, this is my video and I'll do what I want with it. But without any further ado, let's get started. What about Pikachu and Eevee? You know, the stars of the best Pokemon game in years. That is, apart from Pokemon Go! Okay! <laughs> Shut up now! What? I'm serious. You really need to learn to appreciate games more! I mean, this is a great game! I mean, even Pikachu is getting mad! Calm down, Pikachu! Pikachu! Wow. That was just as accurate as the motion controls in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Okay, so I'll put Pikachu and Eevee on the list too, but let's start with Bulbasaur, the original number one. Not counting Rhydon, the Pokemon designed first, or Arceus, the apparent first Pokemon ever, or Victini, the Pokemon before Bulbasaur in the National Dex. Number zero? How does that even work? It's Bulbasaur. I mean, what do I really say here? He's a frog dinosaur thing with a constantly changing color that no one seems to agree on with a bulb on his back. I mean, he's a pretty cute dude. I, I like his design overall, and he shapes up pretty well in 3D. He's often overshadowed by his two more popular starter brothers, to the point where he was even completely ignored in Pokemon Origins. Let's stick this boy in B tier. He's a good boy. Speaking of Pokemon Origins, let's talk about Charmander. Between Skirt... <laughs> Skirtle. Between Squirtle and Charmander, I remember Charmander getting more love, uh, most likely because of his final evolution, Charizard. I'm pretty confident in saying this because Game Freak has given Charizard so much special attention I'm getting fucking sick of him. Originally Charmander was by far my favourite Gen 1 starter, but overuse of the Gen 1 Pokemon in general has left a bad taste in my mouth. Heck, we even got to pick one in X and Y, and, and there they could Mega Evolve. It left my Gen 6 starter feeling... Very neglected. Squirtle, I find, has even less going on for it than Charmander, aside from the fact that he's real THICK. However, despite that, they're both going in C. Charmander isn't cool by himself. I mean, I mean, the only reason I really got him was for Charizard and Squirtle? I mean, I'm not shitting on Squirtle, he's no D tier. I just find him the least interesting of the three. Shitting on Squirtle, that sounds like the name of a... I don't know what that sounds like the name of, but sounds like something. I can't believe that you don't like the Gen 1 starters all that much. Why is that? Well, I, I mean, it's it's just that- Can you do Pikachu and Eevee now? God damn it! Name any other mascot that's been thrown in your face more times than you can count. I'm really wondering why I haven't expressed the desire to strangle this little yellow turd until he stops pika preving before now. Could be, because it just genuinely just has a great design. I mean, sure, they've changed it more times than you can... You can count. My, my linguistics really needs an update. I absolutely hate how they changed Pikachu's cry to the generic anime. Pika Pika! I mean, where's this good old...
I'm not joking, that's how he used to sound. But Detective Pikachu really sparked... <laughs> sparked. Detective Pikachu really sparked my appreciation for him all over again. Uh, much like in Pokemon Emerald, where he was really hard to find. Uh, getting a Pikachu in Emerald was an incredible feeling. Later games have kind of just thrown him at you from the get-go, and it's kind of... It, it doesn't have that same feeling of rarity that it used to. I personally think Pikachu belongs in the A tier. I, I really don't think I've ever disliked him at any point, and- Hang on! I've got a scene from a Pokemon movie that'll make you want to put Pikachu in S tier. Here, take a look! It's because I always want to be with you. <gasps> Pikachu, you- It always ends up like this, doesn't it? Despite my constant trying, my desperate struggle to keep myself away from this kind of media, it always comes back. I can't cringe enough! Ugh. So Eevee, of course, is Pikachu's uh, alternate option. Honestly, I don't think it's quite as cute as Pikachu. That might be because of the weird little hairs sticking out of its scalp or the constant Why, right? sprouting from its mouth. God, I hate that sound. Eevee's there so it can be evolved. This is literally what it was made to do. I, I mean, not evolving your Eevee is like uh, not eating that burger you just bought or not evolving your Eevee. I, I, what do you want me to compare this to? Which makes the starter Eevee and let's go a complete waste of a fucking Pokemon. It doesn't evolve. What a wonderful idea, Game Freak. Let's take the Pokemon known for evolving and stop it from doing just that. How hard would it have been to just include the Eeveelutions in the minigames? With the hundreds and millions of dollars these games rake in, I really can't believe it'd be all that difficult. I mean, you don't even have to include all the evolutions, just the first three, because you've excluded every gen from two onwards. I know Pikachu can't evolve as well, but when your whole shtick is that you can evolve into multiple different Pokemon, not being able to evolve is a pretty big deal. Eevee goes in... Z tier. Does that stand for Z move? Ho ho! <laughs> The Johto starters are Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. Each one I like in their own way, but for these ones, I feel Chikorita is the weakest of the bunch, purely from a design standpoint, and also from a gameplay standpoint. C-Rank seems appropriate. I mean, he's cute, but that's pretty much it. Cyndaquil, on the other hand, is cute and cool! Oh, look at that blazing fire! Oh, 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 oh. So you're telling me that 90% of the time he looks like this? Totodile! Look, the sexy boy, there ain't nothing he don't have. An easy A rank. He was also a Pokemon and Red Rescue Team, so that's a thing. Ever played those games? They're pretty good. Uh, however, they do the same stupid shit that the main games do and release two versions with no reason. Uh, and then a third as well. Stop it, Game Freak. There's no point anymore. No one wants this. Who actually enjoyed Ultra Sun and Moon? Have I ever mentioned that Nintendo DS and 3DS games here in New Zealand are almost always full price? I'm talking like, you know how in the US, you know, you got your Pokemon Ultra Sun, let's say, for like $32 at Target and 40 at GameStop, so like around the average around 35 uh, American dollars, let's say. Uh, here in New Zealand, <laughs> uh, we've got that same game for, uh, what is it? 70 to 80 New Zealand dollars, and that translates to around 50 US dollars. That's a whole like 15 bucks more expensive for you anyway. Bucks. So why the hell does Game Freak think we're still gonna buy two versions of the same game? I, I mean, people have obviously caught on to these schemes by now, you know, make two of the same game, there are barely any differences, like, people are just, you know, we've caught on, we've caught on by now, we're just, uh, people are still buying the same games twice, oh, oh god. That reminds me, where did I put my Let's Go Pikachu edition? It's a very different game! Definitely worth that $95. Hoenn introduced us to Trico, Torchic, and Mudkip. Now, Trico's alright, and honestly I like his evolution better, but we'll get onto that later. Trico as himself looks pretty good in Pokemon Emerald, but it looks goofy AF in X and Y. What is this? What is with the button in his head? Can I put him between C and D? I, I want to put him in C, but he looks so fucking silly. Torchic was my partner in Pokemon and Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. Uh, if you've played that game, you'll know why he's going in S. Mudkip's pretty cool too, but I think his design is incredibly unique, and I like how his mouth moves like a puppet's. He goes in A tier. Speaking of puppets! Greetings, it is I, the Violet Demon. Who's that? Shh, don't look, we just, just pretend we didn't see him. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, are you ignoring me in there? Hey, I'm talking to you. So, uh... What about those Generation 4 Pokémon? Right. Get onto those now. 
Turtwig is a funny little fellow, and my favourite out of the three Sinnoh starters. Honestly, there's nothing too special or interesting about him, rather than I just don't like monkeys, and Piplop's final evolution never looked appealing to me. I'll slap him in the B tier, and we'll forget about it for now. As I just said, I don't really like monkeys, so Chimchar's sifting down to D. No other reason, really. Piplup, however, has one of the best cries in the game, so he's sitting pretty on B rank. Also, he's pretty cute. Next up, the Generation 5 started. Mark my words, Radical Soda. I'll get in there! Oh, wait a minute. Oh, God, oh, oh, shit! Right, there you are. <coughs> what the hell happened? Where's the violent demon? Oh, him? He, uh... He went home! Pokemon Black and White introduced us to Snivy, Tepig, and Oshawott. Now, Snivy here is my favourite starter, period, and while they butchered him completely when he transitioned to 3D, uh, at least he's still got his awesome sprite and great cry. <coughs> what does fucking Charmander sound like? <coughs> like a synthesizer's diarrhea dump. Cool. Snivy gets S rank. But that's just because he's my favourite. Tepig. Honestly, he's quite forgettable. And for that, I'm sticking him in the Forgotten Zone, where he shall rest for all eternity. He doesn't even have a proper fire pun. He has Tepid. Tepid. As in only slightly warm, a lukewarm. What kind of name is that? You're going down! My Pokemon Charmander burns with the intensity of a red-hot flame! Heh. <laughs> well, my Pokemon Tepid glows with the heat of a glass of warm water you leave on the bench for a bit too long. What? Oshawott is quite different to the other two because, uh, he's Piplup. He's just an otter version of Piplup. And goddamn, I hate his name. Oshawott? Oshawott may be a combination of ocean, shell, water, wash, and otter. Oh, that's a bit more complicated than a Tepig pig or an ivy snake. Oshawott's going in D. Sorry for my absence. Uh, I was just, uh, taking care of something. Uh, what was that last Pokemon you were talking about again? Oshawott. What? Yes. Wait, what? Yes, what? I'm asking you what! And I'm telling you what! What? Yes! Where's this joke going again? What? The Generation 6 starters were ones I didn't really have a favourite of. I, I still don't to this day. Maybe it's just because they were the first to be rendered in 3D. I, I mean, honestly, most starter Pokemon don't look as good in 3D. Uh, but each of these have a somewhat weak design, at least I think so. You have Chespin, the first grass type that isn't a reptile, and he's wearing... A, a, a hat, I guess. Uh, but other than that, he's just a cute chestnut chipmunk thing. C-tear, I guess. At least I can say I picked him for my playthrough. Uh, that was something I regretted, and I'll get onto that later. But for now, let's move on to Fennekin, uh, which is the least interesting out of the three. It's just a Fennec Fox. I don't really like the coloring, and the bright yellow really sticks out when comparing it to the other fire starters. All in all, I find Fennekin pretty friggin' boring. Uh, what a snore. D rank for Fennekin, I'm afraid. If Roki isn't getting any special treatment because of Greninja, I'm afraid, a D rank for him as well. I have zero interest in him at all. In fact, screw Chespin C, shove him down to D as well. In my second playthrough through Pokemon Y, I didn't even have a starter. I called it a Zigzagoon instead. A fucking Zigzagoon. It shows you how much I actually like the starters here. So Generation 7 fell from the heavens. Because it didn't belong there in the first place. <laughs> but even though this game was forgettable, at least in my opinion, uh, the starters definitely weren't. We got a uh, Rowlet, Litleo, wait, fucking Litleo, fuck, Litten. Is Litleo even a Pokemon? Okay, yes, yes. I'm not going fucking crazy. And Popplio. Rowlet's an adorable little round owl thingy. I like his face. He doesn't look all that starterish, probably due to the lack of green. But then again, Chespin had that too. I think he deserves a good old A rank. Litten also doesn't really look like a starter. Its weirdly long body is certainly different than the other starters we've seen so far. It's not exactly a design I like, but neither is it a design I dislike. A straight bang in the middle for me, hence C. Now we're on to the 8th generation, which is gonna be a dang tootin' great game, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, the starter Pokemon seems that a lot of people big fans of these ones. Not me. I hate them. Don't like them. I mean, they don't hate them. I'm just... For the sake of the video, I get more views if I say I hate something. We don't actually know their final evolutions yet, or at least we don't at the time of making this video, but Grookey is probably my favourite design out of the bunch, which really surprises me because I don't like monkeys and I don't like Chimchar, and maybe it's just apes I don't like. I think you could do with a bit of a colour change, the orange mouth and arms look a little strange, but other than that, I like him quite a lot. Grookey can go in... B rank? B rank. 
School Bunny also has an appealing design. I like the way in orange, although Jesus Christ, they picked a sillier name. I get that he's probably a soccer player, so Score Bunny, ha 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 ha, and also Scorch, duh, but uh, it, it just ends up reminding me of a similar silly name, Talon Flame. It's, it's not even a pun, it's just Talon and Flame. All in all, not a bad design, so I'm gonna give him a B rank. Uh, 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 hey, wait a minute, doesn't he look awfully familiar? Wait a minute! This isn't Score Bunny! This is just fucking Chessman, what the hell? Grand Metropolis! These are the kind of jokes my audience likes. And he's just doing the same pose as fucking Chimcha! Why is his head a balloon? Oh, I get it. Uh, Pokemon designs are getting more cute and simple as time goes on, but this poor thing wouldn't be able to keep that noggin above his shoulders. It's gotta be triple his goddamn body weight! Sorry, Zobble fans. Uh, not too keen on this one, I'm afraid. Oh, crap, that sounds like Sobble fans! What do we do? Uh, 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 you come in here. I've, I've got a plan. Let's, let's... Right! We know you're in there! And we know you're committing sacrilege to our beloved Sobble! We're coming in whether you like it or not! Alright, that's it! I'm gonna... What the... Uh, hello there, uh, uh, citizen. Uh, uh, we are currently investigating a crime against the best Pokémon, Sobble. Uh, we, we don't uh, we don't know where the culprit's gone though, so we're just investigating now. Oh, oh, I, di I didn't realize. I'm sorry. I, I I have like 40 people waiting outside to torture and maim him, so I was just I was just coming into you know. And if you're already working on it, I'm, I'm, I'm yes, of course we're working. Very hard, so you can up uh, uh, leave now. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was just gonna go. W wait a minute. Why are you working on a hate crime? And who are you? Huh? Why it's me, Bear Crab, a bear, a uh, uh, bear chest. And she's here. Why? Uh, uh, he, she's uh, uh, my 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 wife. Oh, well, darn it. I, I was hoping to get her number. And you have a very beautiful wife there, uh, Officer, uh... Uh, 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 uh I'm, uh... Crap, all I can think of is Pokemon names. Asha, what? Asha, what? What? Let's be honest, nobody really cares all that much about the middle evolutions of Pokemon. Let's just do a rapid fire of the middle evolutions and get them over and done with, huh? Ivysaur, a better version of Bulbasaur with more colors. A solid A rank, at least in the drawings, and 3D not so much. Charmeleon, a slightly more edgy version of Charmander. Not that amazing, but not bad. I mean, let's give it a B. It still looks cool. Wartortle, actually gives Squirtle some much needed uniqueness. A rank. Bayleaf, I like the design a lot, and it's by far the best out of the Chikorita line, and good solid A rank. Quilava's just a stretched out Cyndaquil that's opened its eyes. I'm not a huge fan, but it's not bad either. I'll, I'll go with C, but it's kind of in between B and C. Croconaw's kind of goofy looking. I can't say I'm a fan. It reminds me of a caveman with that over-the-shoulder stripe. D-rank. Grovel is one of the coolest looking middle evolutions and it's the best of the Trico line. A-rank. Combuskin looks like a cock and balls. Marshtomp looked okay in 2D. Now he looks like he's shed his pants on the bus and can't do anything about it. D-rank. I'm sorry, but Grotto looks pretty fucking stupid. It looks like he's wearing a hard hat over his entire body. D-rank. Monferno's design irks me. I, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I don't like about it, but it, I just don't. Maybe it's that whole chimp thing again. D-rank. What is with the Sinnoh trio having dumbass looking metal evolutions? <laughs> Primplop's a D-rank. Servine is a fine vine with the time to shine. Easy ass S-rank. Pig Knight's name is probably the only good thing about him. He's wearing one of those wrestling costumes and I don't want to imagine a pig in one of those. D-rank. Do what? Actually looks alright. B-rank. Quilladin. What the fuck?! Gregson looks a heck of a lot better than Finnegan and actually looks like some sort of mage. Having the white chest fur really balances out the proportions, unlike Finnegan, who has this weirdly long, thin neck. B-rank. Frogadier looks... Well, I feel like he could have looked cool, but something about him looks real fucking goofy to me. I've just got no love in me for this design. Dartrix is a weird looking college cool guy. I, I don't hate the design, as like most of these D-ranks I'm handing out, but Jesus, I just have no interest in this evolution whatsoever. Toracat, aside from the silly name, is 
pretty neat. I mean, I mean, it's not like it's a huge step up from Litten, but it's a nice wee design. I would say B rank. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? And since the new Gen 8 Pokemon are yet to evolve, uh, here's where we put in Raichu and the Evolutions. If they could actually evolve in their respective games. Let's move on to the last Pokemon. Well, we're finally here, the big boys, the final evolutions, and it's only been 20 minutes. Let's get started, shall we? Ivysaur, mate, uh, maybe cut down on the McDonald's Big Macs a little bit. You're getting a little, you're getting a little, I'm not saying anything, maybe just start up a gym membership, maybe eat a salad. Oh, this, this is Venusaur. He's a, he's a little bit, he's a bit, oh he's a, he's got a mega evolution, he's got, he's got, he's got a mega evolution, doesn't he? Uh, a, a, a mega thingy, yes, yes, let's, uh, yes. Yeah, 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 I mean, I, I mean, I mean, they're gonna make him look really super cool with this one, don't they? They put a flower on his forehead. Charizard. I mean, you already know where this is going. He's clearly the favorite of Pokemon fans and Game Freak alike. I mean, heck, two Mega Evolutions and now he's the champion's Pokemon in Sword and Shield? Even Pikachu isn't given that much special attention. Oh Jesus, I, I take that back. Holy fuckeroni. Blastoise. I would definitely have put him at A rank if it kept his fluffy ears and tail, but as it is now, he's just kind of a turtle with cannons coming out of his shell. And not a bad design by any means, though. It's simple but effective. And his Mega's cool too, so B rank it is. Meganium, along with the rest of the Gen 2 and Gen 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 final evolutions, didn't actually receive Mega Evolutions. Uh, so what we see here is what we get, uh, and what we get is a bay leaf without the leaf on its head, so it just looks kind of silly to be honest. Not as ugly as Venusaur though, so rank C it is. Typhlosion on the other hand looks really cool, another simple yet striking design. Let's stick him in A rank, uh, although a high B is also another possibility. For Alligator is... A little funny looking, isn't he? I, I, I understand what they were going for, but he doesn't really look feral. He just kind of looks like he finished a three course meal and can't wait to sit down in his favorite lazy boy. Can't really figure out if it's a high D or a C. Let's just stick him in C. I, I bet it'd look way better if they'd actually made him a quadruped. Maybe I'm being too harsh? I mean, maybe I'm just getting more and more cynical as this video goes on. Or maybe you're getting less cynical. Sorry, I... Stop paying attention a while back. I, I I don't usually stick around this long. So Sceptile is a bit of a weird one. I've got the attention span of a rabbit badger with a penis disease. Sceptile is somewhat less- Wait, what? Sceptile's less cool than Grovile, but slightly cooler than Meganium or Feraligator, especially since it is that cool looking Mega Evolution. Uh, B seems like a good fit. Blaziken, however, is much cooler than Cock Buskin over here, uh, transforming into a strong, fast fighting chicken. Anyway, you got a Mega before the other two Gen 3 starters did for X and Y. Uh, and well, I'll be honest, it's not really cooler than the standard Blaziken, but that's alright, I guess. I mean, even just going by regular Blaziken, it easily fits into the A... S... maybe? S. We'll go with S. Well done, Blaziken. Well done. I wrote Smaphurt. I wrote fucking Smaphurt. <laughs> So Smappet's pretty fucking cool. I don't care what anyone says. Origin, <coughs> oh whoa, Origin Blue color scheme? Yes, please. Muddy water? Yes, please. Immunity to electric attacks? Yes, please. Getting fucking swole? Well, I'm not the biggest fan of his mega, but it's really not all that bad. He's rocking into that S rank, boys. You're pushing your luck, Scoob. Torterra is glorious. He's what Venusaur should have been. Look at that magnificent, sturdy tree trunk. Those glorious, thick legs. That confident smile. I don't even know why I like him so much. I mean, it's a mystery. I mean, maybe I thought to myself that because I didn't like any of the two other Vinyl Evolutions, I somehow convinced myself uh, that this one was the best. But, I mean, anyway, he gets an A ranking. Infernape. Not really a fan of this one. Why does the fire go from Inferno's tail to Infernape's head? Why? Well, I've got no more questions. I, I guess the design's just not for me. Uh, not an Infernape devotee, I'm afraid, so I guess he's in D rank there. Empoleon is a bit of a weird one because he's meant to look badass, but... I mean, come on. He's a penguin. You guys know what's coming up next. That's right! Superior! He's sifting right into A rank.
Despite how much I like him, I can't honestly say he has the strongest design, and I'm not a fan of the colours they chose. I feel Servine had a much nicer colour scheme. Uh, I hope this really helps you to see I'm not just blindly picking favourites here, and I really am analysing these Pokemon to the best degree that I can. It's not easy to create a ranking list when so many external influences can sway your decision one way or the other. Oh shit, is that Embor? Samurott, I honestly believe, receives far more hate than it deserves. I mean, sure, it completely transforms from an otter to a sea lion, but I mean, hey, it still looks pretty cool, and it's not like there haven't been other drastic changes when it comes to final evolutions. Honestly, I think he belongs in B rank. I think he can look really cool, but the games don't show his full potential. I feel like I want to make some more jokes about how everyone's going to get so furious that I dare smoke. Smoke? <laughs> that I dare speak cr crack. I dare speak crack! That I dare speak against their beloved Pokemon starter. I mean, it's gonna look pretty fucking silly when I publish the video and get like three views. And then demonetized. And then copyright claimed. And then copyright striked. And then banned from YouTube. Chestnut's looking a little funky! Who's the rotten dude that stuck an eggshell to your head, man? Who did this to you? Oh, it, it's part of your design. Delphox, what happened to you? You look... boring. Greninja, wow! You grew into one badass frog! What's that? You're the favorite out of the three? Oh, okay then. Gen 7! Shit, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a bit of a long video! We're finally here! And I mean... Shit, if even big girls can't be bothered sticking around, I mean, I'm, fuck, I don't know how many of you use a lift. Decidui. I mean, he looks pretty cool, I guess. I mean, it seems to be following the same pattern from the Gen 6 where they make one cool, one manly, and one girly. Uh, with Decidui being the cool one. Uh, most games do this somewhat so they can cover all bases when it comes to audience and what people prefer. So I guess it makes sense that Incineroar is as manly as starters come and Primarina is as girly as they've ever gotten. Honestly, the archetypes kind of ruined them for me. I mean, heck, even Delphox wasn't this girly. It, it generally, starter Pokemon are animalistic enough to the point where it doesn't matter if they're male or female, but having a male Primarina or a female Incineroar feels a bit off. Other than that, their designs are fairly decent. However, I struggle to really take much delight in any of them. Uh, for me, I feel Decidueye and Primarina fall into C rank. They're perfectly acceptable, while Incineroar falls into D. We've seen far too much of the fire fighting type ever since Blaziken, and I know he's a dark type not fighting, however I'm just judging this from looks alone. It doesn't matter what type he is, we've been sick of macho looking fire types for a while now. It just because you change the type doesn't change what he looks like. Also, he's got these weird sausage fingers, ooh. And that's it, that's, that's all the starter Pokemon, at least so far. I bet when I'm halfway through editing the video, the Generation 8 Final Evolutions will be leaked or something, and then I'll look like a huge buffoon. But anyway, that, that that's that's it for me. I mean, no more Pokemon for me for a while. I'm all Pokemoned out. Hey there, I've just finished my own Pokemon tier list. Take a look. Huh. Uh, oh no, I've forgotten Oshawott. What?